and yeah here we go good evening everyone um welcome to legacy lab and um welcome to our monthly edition of the digital edge series and the goal of this series is to equip everyone with the goal of the series is to equip us with necessary skills and tools especially in this digital age to optimize um, our skills in the rapidly evolving digital economy. And um, today with us is a Rotarian, a coach, a multipreneur, Tevitokbe Olukule, a global talent consultant, a Forbes Council member. Forbes Council is actually an invitation only community for successful CEOs and entrepreneurs. And we're lucky to have um, her with us today. Um, she is also uh, one of the 1% um, Upwork um, professionals. And um, she is the CEO of Outnovately Africa, which is um, a, an outfit um, prioritizing and encouraging the youth to venture into gig economy which is the new normal. So today she will be taking us on networking navigation, how to network effectively for growth and impact. And uh, if you have any question at the end of the series, um, you'll give, you could drop it in the chat box or you could raise your hand and ask her. So over to you, our coach. Thank you so much, boss. Thank you for that powerful introduction. Can I be heard? Yeah, loud and clear. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I guess because I'm a co-host, I'm also getting notifications from here when people try to join in. So good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining and thank you so much. Um, I, I will call you my Rotarian, even though this is not a Rotary meeting. So give me the, um, just give me that chance to call you you know, my powerful Rotarian. Thank you for having me here. And thank you and well done for the great work you are doing with Legacy Lab. Um, I salute your passion. I'm encouraged and I'm inspired by the work that you are doing. Um, so well done to you as well. And today, of course, you've given me an assignment and I'm here to do justice to that within the short time that I have. And it's such a privilege to be speaking with everyone here. Uh, what makes me qualified to, to speak to you I mean, honestly, if I'm just really looking at, you know, what I do and all of that, there are, far, there are people who are far experienced, who are far better. Um, so it is still a privilege to be here and I appreciate um, everyone for being here. So I'm just going to share my screen, if you permit me, just so that we're able to follow through the, the process very quickly. I did a presentation or I put together a slide and I think that it might be good to just um, run through that to guide our thoughts um you know based on the assignment that is before us as soon as you can see my screen please feel free to let me know um yes i think i can see my own screen <laughs> on my other phone so we're here networking navigation put together by the legacy lab and of course an introduction has been done already my name is Timmy, and i'm a forbes coach an expert vetted freelancer global talent consultant, so I recruit for international organizations and most recently even local organizations as well. Of course, it was from local to international and now we're also infusing some local organizations as well. So we recruit talent for them. And at the same time, also a freelance coach. And when I say eight figures, I used to say six figures, uh, but I just really thought about it. Of course, coming back home now, talking about Naira, and I figured that through freelancing, I've been able to make you know eight figures. And so that is my space. And digital economy is really my space. So when I'm talking about networking navigation, I'm not just talking about fifth, um, physical, you know, networking, the definition of networking that we know, and we're still going to get there anyway. I'm also talking about the new world that we're in, which is a, a digital world. How do you network with people? I've had the privilege of, you know, speaking and hosting and being in the circles of powerful men and women in the world and i honestly say that i don't have to put everything online but behind the scene i know the gathering of people that i've sat with and when i really think about how i got there in the first place 
is really through networking and most of them were done virtually online you know before i now began to see them physically in fact the people i call my mentor today the person i call my mentor i've had to work with him for over two years you know networked online before i even met him physically so we're going to be talking about the digital economy um networking both online and offline and why networking in the first place so that's really what this is about but why networking navigation why did we call this webinar or this session navigation networking navigation because we are in a world of what is a need for me and we want to rewrite that story we want to correct the notion that that's not really what networking is about so that is all of the things we want to do but before we go i want to give us a short assignment it's like an icebreaker and i want everybody to participate I want to see your chat in the chat room. So I'm seeing my boss is here. Thank you for joining, Saz. I'm seeing my powerful Rotarians in the house. Thank you, Saz. So I, I'm going to throw this out, and I want you guys to drop it in the comment section. If I throw everyone here, you as an individual, if we put you into a room filled with 30 billionaires, and you have 30 minutes to network, how many business cards would you be able to collect? Uh, you tell me. So you look at the time that you have. You have 30 minutes. And you have 30 billionaires. So you have somebody like Tony Elumelu, you have people like Femi Otedola, you have people like Bill Gates, Elon Musk, or, you know, um, Zuckerberg. You, you have these guys, right? And you have 30 minutes, and there are 30 of them. Please tell me how many business cards will you be able to come out of that room with? Um, you know, you have to be able to put a number on it. <laughs> Give us some numbers on the average. <clears throat> excuse me. On an average, how many minutes are you planning to spend with one person? So how much cards can you get from them or contacts? Maybe not their cards. So whatever, just let me know. I'm reading the chat right now, guys. Um, Tabitha says that's much as possible. Put a number on it. Let's see. Um, let me see. Sam says six, okay? Sarah says six to eight. Awesome. So on an average, maybe like um, from 20. <laughs> that's like 40 seconds per person <laughs> okay now any other response maybe 10 Messi says maybe 10 any other response let's see maybe two three more response and then we move on i have a reason for doing this and i think that we'll understand very soon honestly three at most okay okay tabitha says three at most okay any other one rashid says six okay now if you ask me 30 minutes um, to network with 30 billionaires. Personally, if you ask me, I'll come out with a maximum of two cards. But on an average, one. And so what am I saying? And why am I saying that? And this is where we're going. The way we've always seen networking is I just want to get the contact of people, connect with people you know, get their details, then later, you know, I'll call them maybe when I need their help for something or when it's time to do something and they are the ones in, the, they are the gatekeeper of that industry or, you know, when it's time to, you know, so we do that already and that's how we exchange. But networking is actually something that it requires a lot of intentionality and building relationship. Now, 30 minutes is not enough to network with 30 people, but when it comes to 30 billionaires, the idea is not for you to get their contact because you're going to call them i can assure you that you get their cards you get their number but you're going to call them and they won't pick or they, they are peer picks and they tell you who is this but you can use 30 minutes to make an impact in the lives of two one or two people that you have enough time to you know to network to speak with to discuss with that they will remember you the next time they see you 60 seconds is not enough sometimes you know, 30 minutes is not even enough, but you can still walk around that. But to, to be collecting 20 cards, trust me, you're just getting it to show off later. You might not be able to really do anything with it. And now, why I, I did this icebreaker is for us to just really look at what are the existing ideas that we have about networking and what is really networking. Networking is about building relationship, you know, and as a popular saying states, we all know that, you know, your network is really your net, um, your net worth and i think there's a little mistake there. and you are a sum total of the people closest to you sometimes five sometimes six sometimes 12. you know people like to use 12 because even jesus you know if you're a christian you know that jesus had 12 disciple and most recently i was listening to michelle obama and then she was saying that she had 12 
you know, good friends that they've grown together from childhood. And Oprah Winfrey says, 12 is too much. How can you have 12? I have just one, Gail. And then, you know, um, Michelle had to give us some perspective. And so what I'm really trying to say is every one of us here, we are a sum total of the people that we have around us. And so when we network, we have to do it with a lot of intentionality. However, how not to network is people will smell desperation when you get into a place and they know that you really just want to get something from them. Seasoned networkers, like I put it here, can smell the stench of desperation from across the room. People can sense when something or someone is out to help themselves alone. I see people sending me DMs and you can already smell where that DM is going. Some people reach out to you because of, of course, we all know we need something, but we don't network because we need something. We don't start the networking because we need something. You have to start the process, you know, from the very preliminary level and a neutral level. And you have to also think about what can you do for this person. And so you see people reach out just randomly. You want a job and then, you know, you want them, maybe they're, they're an HR on LinkedIn and then you want a job and you just see people sending an email directly to them or sending a DM directly to them or a LinkedIn message directly to them to say, oh, I need a job. Is something open in your office? That's not how to network. Something happened very recently. A guy I was recruiting, he had to go online to look for a colleague that works in my company and it's an international organization where there are processes and procedures. And this guy had to look for this lady look for the person that works in that organization and send them a message. Now, the message, sending a message is not a problem because if you were sending the message to network, it would not be a problem. But you sent a message talking about the job you applied for and nobody had responded to you. You see that that's not how to network because the person had to do a screenshot and send the message to me to say, who is this guy? Has he even passed our assessment? This is what he said, that he has sent a message to you and that you have not responded so they should I should, they should look into it. So he had already killed his own chance of getting a job because the idea is he wanted to network, but he did it the wrong way. He went out, he could have sent a message to say, oh, I, you work in this organization and I would really not love to connect. This is what I do. And this is how I think I can come into the organizations where you guys have an opening. And when the person responds, you cannot begin to say, by the way, I did apply for an opportunity with your organization some time ago, and I'm here to get a response. But you're not just putting yourself in the front like, this is why I'm here. Now, what is true networking? True networking then occurs when, the, when there is an understanding that everyone in the room has equal value, including you. It's about you enjoying other people, communicating your passions, connecting with others, the people who share those passions with you. And it's really about quantity. I mean, quality, not quantity. Now, which takes us back to the icebreaker that I said 30 billionaires in 30 minutes. It's not about the quantity, how many contacts you are able to get. No, it's about the quality of those relationships that you are able to build within that time frame. Now, if you're able to build 10 relationships among the 30 within that 30 minutes, fine and good. But we all know that to be able to print your name in the heart of a man, and don't forget these guys are busy, to be able to print your name in their heart, then it better be something really valuable. You had better indeed made a good impression on them. And we're still getting to how you are going to do that. I'm just really laying the foundation within the short time that we have. What again is networking? It's about listening. It's about figuring out what other people need and connecting them with people you think can help without any personal gain in mind at first. And the most successful networkers know, they know that it's about relationship first. And, you know, just recently, a few seconds, a few minutes ago, maybe close to an hour, I was writing, you know, on my Instagram and I said, and it was something that my pastor said that it will always be people over profit. It will always be money over men. And that is how I think we should begin to think about networking, building relationships first, not necessarily what is a need for me, but how can I come? You know, what can I bring to the table? And finally, before we now begin to get into the breakdown, now that we know that networking is not really so much about what can people give to me, it's also about, you know, what can I do as well? We need to remember that since everybody has a value, it is essential that you too know your value. So whenever you are networking, before you attend any networking event, get clear on what you are bringing to the table. And these days, people hardly go for physical events that they network, even online in social gatherings when you get into a space, it's also an avenue to network. We're going to get to all those later, but 
just on the just to, to buttress this point it's an opportunity to network but you also want to understand what you carry what you are bringing to the table so that you have something to talk about particularly how you are able to help other people it might be now or it might be later in the future i remember you know somebody reached out last year that oh they would like to host somebody that i had hosted on my own show every week i have a kss session on instagram it's called outnovate and so somebody reached out to me so that how can they reach out to these people they've sent them dms and nobody responded their dms so how am i able to bring them on my event how do i network with people like that to bring them for my event for them to speak and i said i made the connection long before i needed them that's what we get wrong i made the networking connection long before i needed them to come to my show and so it's not because I need them. Of course, there are times I will reach out to people you don't know them before, or you've been following them from afar, but you just really reach out to them when you need them. It's fine. But the ideal networking in this digital age and time is you literally network even before you need them. So you also want to bring something to the table. My, I mean, there are people that I've been volunteering for for some years, and we're going to get it. I don't want to get ahead of myself. It is when I now need them that people think, oh, did you pay millions of naira? to get them on board no it is because i've also been bringing value so you want to understand what you bring as well to the table to be able to network with these people so why networking why should we network in my opinion why should we network the world is moving fast there are opportunities everywhere you know and there are opportunities for people to network there are opportunities for people to hurt each other as well people are online these days taking advantage of each other so people are careful everybody is like mm, i don't want to pass my boundary i don't want anybody to insult me and, but that is because we also don't understand the power in networking. First, you are the CEO of your life. What is the meaning of CEO? CEO means chief everything officer. I know that you know CEO to be chief executive officer, but I'm telling you today that CEO means chief everything officer. And so if you are the CEO of your life, you are the CEO of your work, of your business, of your career, you are responsible for growth. You are responsible for partnerships. You are responsible for advancement. And so in, in, in the responsibility is on you to network for growth because you can't really grow, uh, which takes us to the next point. You can't grow without networking, without people. You can't do life alone. You, nobody does life alone. Now, I'm on this call today. Our powerful host, we met while I was in, uh, while I was in the university. I mean, if we had had a very great disagreement and then everybody just went their ways, I'm sure we'll never have a reason to collaborate today or partner. It doesn't mean that people don't have issues, but networking, you network long, way before you even need it. So you can't do life alone. Just understand that. The second and the third thing I mean is collaboration is the new competition. We've been, we've been competing over the years. It's always about what can I do? My own business, it's my own, is your own, that's your own. We're now in the age of collaboration where people come together to partner, joint alliances, joint ventures, strategic partnerships. That is the age that we, no matter what you are building right now, whether it's a business, it's a career, you need people. You definitely need people. Um, I'm going to give an example for there was a job that changed the type of salary range I was collecting. I mean, um, there was a time in my life that my salary range was in certain range, like the very common range that we earn in Nigeria. When I was going to move to a higher range, it took me networking. It was on LinkedIn. It was someone I met on LinkedIn who said, okay, there's an opening here. And this is how this is. And uh, this is the job. This is what they require. And I, and I applied. And that's how things started changing. My mindset started changing as well. The same time, it was a network I made some years ago during my master's. When I asked a particular friend, how much do they earn in your organization? Somebody like me who is in this role, in your organization, how much are they earning? And then that person told me, this is how much they earn. And I'm like, oh my God, if this is how much they earn, it's like time stem of what I earn, then I need to upgrade. And now this were all done through networking. If I didn't meet that person, I would not know that in this Nigeria, there are some people making that kind of mad money per month. So you need people, you need to understand that collaboration is a new competition and your next job or client is a networking way. Um, that, among many other reasons, of course, these are the reasons why I think networking is very, very critical. You can't do life alone. Collaboration is really and definitely the new competition and your next job or client is a networking way. And of course, you are the CEO of your life. So now to the main point, which is how then do we network like a pro 
in this digital economy, how should we network like a pro? The first thing I would like to say is start from where you are and start a network before you need it. Just like I said, if you remember when we're talking about how these people, whenever I host them, people are like, okay, so how do you get them? Do you just send them a DM? You can also send them a DM. There are people that I, like I said, it's not like I met them, you send them a DM. But the reality in life is you don't wait till you need people or you need something before you network. And now somebody will say, I am very shy to me. So when you say that network, how do you, how, how do I come out of my shell? I'm very shy. I don't like to connect with people or I don't even want them to give me a laugh. Like I don't want people to shun me out. I am very shy as well. I can be very shy. And I know that that is very hard for people to believe. People will not believe that I'm shy because they see me doing things that is opposite of what a shy person would normally do. I'm here speaking. I'm, I'm always doing videos, posting online. I'm always on IG live events, public speaking, keynote speaker. It is because I understand that this might be a limitation. I'm not one of those people that will accept shyness as my personality or this is my personality, so I'm going to stay there. No, that is not me. I'm going to come out of that shell because all that I want to do and all that I want to achieve is on the other side of fear. And so I need to step out of my comfort zone to confront that fear and limitation to be able to get to the stage and, you know, the level that I really want. So that would require you to stand, start from where you are. Start with your friends. I mean, you don't have to send Obama message first to learn how to network. Start from around you. There are so many people you have that you guys say every day, but you still don't know them. You don't know what they do. You're in the same community. You don't know what they do. Start from where you are and start to network before you need it. Are there organizations you want to work? Are there companies you want to partner with online? Don't start on the day you know you need them. Start now. Go on LinkedIn. Follow them. Go on Instagram. Follow them. Start engaging. You know, start doing all of that. And then, you know, you are showing your way to strategic networking. The second thing is you also meet people through others. I call something the three R methodology. I, and I think I shared this some time ago, some month ago, um, you know, in one of my writings for, for these media houses. I don't know if it was the business day or punch. And I called it the three R methodology for growth or career growth or business growth or personal growth. It's called the referrals, reference and recommendation. You see these three things that are very, very powerful. Um, you know, referrals are, you know, somebody suggesting you, of course, or somebody referring. It's like you do something for somebody and through them, you get 10 more clients, you get 10 more deals, you get 10 more jobs. So they keep referring you like, you know, this guy is good. He's happy waiting they talk. Reference is when you need people to stand for you or stand with you or, you know, write for you to vouch for you that you know what you are saying and you can do this thing. Those are references. And then recommendation, of course. You need people who will be speaking for you in rooms that you cannot get to. People who will say, I can't. it's different from referrals. These people can recommend you for opportunities, for bigger deals. You need these three hours. And the best way to explain this is when you look at LinkedIn, for people who are on LinkedIn here, if you scroll down to LinkedIn, there is a section in LinkedIn where people can write comments about, oh, I worked with Temi before, and this is who she is, and this is who she are, blah, 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 blah. But those things are called recommendation. Now, when you are applying for maybe scholarships or you're applying for your master's, maybe in certain universities, um, maybe in the UK or for some jobs, they ask you for reference. Now, referrals, you don't even need to, I mean, some, sometimes we do it, we ask manually. There are people you do a job for, you work somewhere, and that's why we don't burn bridges. You work for them, you did something for them, you offer the service to them. Those people are your marketers, more important than the people you are paying. The people that has worked with you or that you have worked for are your most important referrals. So it's part of networking to understand that people over profit, men over money, if you do a good job, that's a powerful networking tool that they can use to recommend you later because you've done a good job. Uh, and for me, those are the things that I really practice. So meet people through others, meet people through your friends, meet people through you know your community, your circle. And that is the second point on how to network like a pro. The third you know, way to network like a pro, I call it leverage social media through strategic commenting and post engagement. There are so many people I've met today. It was through, it's not like I've seen them physically. It was through Instagram. You know, we're just, they just comment on my post and then they keep showing up powerful comments. They say things like, oh, 
strategic comments in not just putting um you know emojis and clapping you see their comments and even you you're like wow you've done a good justice to this you've summarized my post because that's the same thing i do to network there are people that i don't i don't really comment on their post but there are people that i go to their page and when they post i comment there strategically they will see it might not be that day it might be another day and they're just like who is this person and then they come to check your page and then they see what you do and then they see what you are selling and then it might not be immediately like i said but the day you reach out to them they feel like they know you already not because you guys talk but because they've seen you you've been positioned so you want to start looking at that how you can network with people by just strategically positioning yourself around them you can leverage social media it's the age of social media it's the digital economy there are so many people we've never met and we've done business deals together they've recommended me for opportunities about three years ago somebody called me and said oh i have a friend in the us he's a doctor he needs a virtual assistant i don't know if and he needs a lady you know who is this who can do this as at that time i was any hundred thousand one twenty thousand era so maybe three four four years ago yeah about four years ago i think hundred or one twenty thousand era and this opportunity was six hundred dollars per month I mean, if you calculate it in Naira, it was way more than my salary. And this person I've never met in the person who recommended me just because he was seeing my post on Instagram. And he said, oh, they just needed somebody who can speak good English. And the person is in the US. They just need a virtual assistant to be editing their podcast, writing the comp. What am I doing? I'm available, sir. And I took it. I have never met him. It was just through what I was doing, leveraging on social media, strategic commenting. And so we've been doing this thing for long, no be today. Right. So you want to leverage on that. The fourth thing is volunteer and figure out, you know, figure out how to be useful. People also, and this is very similar to what we said at the beginning, right? That when we network, not all the time you go with the mindset of what can I get, which is what happens a lot of times. You just see people, they're already giving you their card. Oh, this is what I do. So it smells desperation. Have you thought about what you can do? These days, I see people also just reach out to you to say, oh, we're inviting you for an event. I want you to be the guest speaker. And then they are asking me as well to, to, they're asking me as well, you know, I don't know, there was somebody, I'm trying to remember how the guy phrased it. And I'm like, you want me to come and speak for you, but you also want me to do the marketing for you. I'm trying to understand how this makes sense. So what exactly are you bringing to the, you want me to come and speak for you on your platform? It was an Instagram live. And you also want me to do the marketing for you. Like I should be the one to be posting for you. I don't understand. What exactly is the need for me? What am I coming to get? Are you paying me? No. So what is exactly you need for? I, I, I'm confused. And so when people go around with that entitlement mentality, you just, even if that person does it once, you've cut off the relationship. You've, you've just ruined the chance of building something good because we just carry that mentality of you know what is the need for me this is what i want you also want to think about how can i serve this person what am i bringing to the table you can volunteer for them because there are two types of networking in fact there are three types of networking there is vertical networking there is horizontal networking and then there is networking across now vertical i mean networking and horizontal is really across so let's leave it at two vertical and horizontal now vertical networking is really networking you know with people who are like mentors who are like coaches who are like above you you know they are not your peers they're not your friends but you know you need them for one thing or the other for whatever reason you need them in your life or your work or your career they are both these are the people that you have to bring something to the table you have to come bearing gift it doesn't have to be money it could be your service it could be your skills there's something we call the three t's in rotary there's talent your time talent and treasure you can serve with your talent you can serve with your time you can serve with your treasure so what are you bringing to the table now when you network across board which is horizontal these are the ones we said you know start from where you are start with your peers start with your friends and you know meet through other people so that's another type of networking so you want to figure out how to be useful as well i think that is very fundamental now the next or the fifth way to network like a pro is be a part of communities join communities and associations uh i mean these days i see people who come online who are in groups and then they meet themselves and then they get married in fact we did three weddings last year and they all met in the same community and part of i mean i'm very big on communities very very big i have my own communities as well about three four of them and i have one that i've co-founded with someone i have some that i've co-founded with some people and some people meet on that platform and they get married how much and business partnerships you know deals jobs on some of the ones that i created myself even though mine is not relationship oriented 
and even if they meet they don't tell us but there are some that you know their relationship period so people have relationship conversations and we did about three weddings last year yes so you can join communities and associations and network with them network with people join groups join an association you are not don't come to group and just keep quiet be a part of what they are doing how can i be a part it might be once in a while contribute let them see your voice let them know that there's somebody here and then you bring value to the table so you want to do that um that's another powerful way to network and then the sixth is remember their names and your manners remember people's name and remember your manners um this gen z generation anyway you see people and i like to give because it's my space i'm an hr i recruit a lot so i like to give career examples most times you see people who want a job and then they send you their cv and no no email they just say they just send their cv and they want you to assume that this cv that i've sent to you is for a job so madam take it up from there read my cv and get back to me and i'm like how and we are condoning this thing because also of course people people apply for jobs you also want to satisfy your client but it is not right you don't just send the cv no comment no email nobody hello hr or dear hiring manager please find attached nothing you see people saying oh this is a whatsapp number they are recruiting for hr role please send your cv and people truly just send the cv to that number no no greeting nothing now there was a popular message that went around whatsapp some years ago it was about um a lady who whose sister told her to reach out to somebody i think her name was bisola and then reach out to her she has a job for you and you know this lady i don't know if you guys read it and this lady just went to chat the bisola out to like hello bisola you know my sister said i should you know reach out to you and here's my cv <laughs> and then the bisola said even your elder sister cannot call me bisola oh bad like you are <laughs> you are told even your elder sister cannot call me by name so you're not ready you're not serious you're not right you are not ready go and learn manners so in networking we also have to be careful and then at the same time help people who are coming up because a lot of us here we know better and when we know better we do better so when you see people around you do certain things correct them let them know that's not how it is done i was with a friend just last week and then there were some kids and then they were with him they came to greet him and then they left and then he said ah these children as small as they are too they can't greet i mean they are I mean, they're already forming, like they can't greet you. I said, they didn't greet me, but did you tell them greet auntie? They know, they are like six, seven, eight, nine. Fine, maybe they just did it like, who is she? We don't know her. They are kids. But did you also tell them, guys, what's wrong with you? Did you greet auntie? That's how to also train people. It starts from there. If they don't know, but we know. And when we know better, we do better. It's the same way. And so when I take responsibility for what people do online, it's not because they're my family members. I don't know some people online, but I take time to correct them because I know that you go and meet it in front if we don't correct you. Let's train you well now. But the other side of that is remember people's name. My fiance does something whenever we are driving or is driving and police stop him. The first thing he does within the five first five, three seconds is to capture their name and he just calls them, Oga okay, Solomon, well done, sir. And they're like, ah, my boss, well done. And then they let him go. I'm like, <laughs> how do you do this thing? Like. You just capture them immediately. They are still trying to say, oh, they're going to down. And within that split of seconds, it just captures the names on their chest and it calls them by the name. So they are taking that back. Like, does he know me? Does he know my boss? Have we seen before? Can this guy report me? So a lot is going on. So they are destabilized within the first few seconds and they don't have a trust them to just let you go. So when they have plans to trouble you before, because you call them by their name, like, ah, Mr. Monday, well done, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Ah, my God, well done. Anything for us, nothing. But before I started doing that, they will want to frustrate you. Bring this, bring that. So people's name is really powerful. That's what I've learned. So I used it for my clients too. When I, and I teach my student, when you are applying for a job, go and research the name of the person that posted that job. Don't just say, dear hiring manager. Call them by their name. Hello, Temi. And they'll be shocked. Like, how did you know? You've done your research. I do it on Upwork too. Now, when people post jobs on Upwork, they don't put their name. But you can go to the client's history and look at the former freelancers they've worked with. What name were they called? Then call it. They're shocked because you did your homework. And I think it's a very powerful networking strategy to call people by their name because they feel like you've done your homework and you're not just using generic name for them. I think I dwelt on that point too much, but because I really love it and it's something I practice and it really works. Another thing is to understand timings and boundaries. There are times that people don't want to talk. So there are times that they're not in the mood. There are times that people are also going through a lot in their lives. 
cut some people some slack. Just understand timings. Know when to ask to make requests. When you see the vibes and the, you know, just give them the space. Understand boundaries. Don't keep pushing. Um, I just said I should remind you again. You know that job. Give people space. Let them understand. That's how to. That's how to end respect too. Right? Don't bombard people. So understand timings. The best time to network. If you need help. Just understand these things, and I think it will really help. I'm running very fast because we have just a few minutes left. The next thing is never look down on anyone. Um, in, in the space of networking or connecting with people these days, sometimes we size people up. And I remembered how um, I became a con con okay, after I became a Forbes coach, there were so many people that I was following on Instagram that never followed me, and then they suddenly followed me back. And I'm like, wow, really? But that is even small. There are people that have been contributing for them for some time. After I became a Forbes coach, they are now willing to do collaborative posts with me. You know collaborative posts on Instagram where you add another account and then that post shows on both of your account. Before, they just tagged me. Oh, this thing was written by Tammy, that's all. But now, because they are big names and big brands, they are willing to do collaborative posts that will show on my page and show on that page. And I'm like, wow, that one is even small. As of three weeks ago, my followers was 4,000. So I did some, I mean, ads. I've been running some ads since the beginning of the year. And I think the followers have been growing. It's been growing. I think it's about 9,000 or 10,000 now. Now, people who have not, did, I mean, verified account who have never followed back, that have been followed for years, they are following back. And I'm like, what? Why are people like this? I have not changed. It is still the same to me. Nothing changed, but because of try to. Because somebody is now a Forbes coach, or because at least your follower, Otin George, I'm like, why? Why are you people like this? Don't look down on people. Don't do that. It's, I mean, you don't know tomorrow. So when we talk about networking, I mean, looking down on people also, you don't know if they can be the gatekeeper someday when you need them. It's like you're going for an interview and you are looking at the security. And like, oh, guy, excuse me, Jerry. You don't know if the next time you are coming, that same guy can sabotage you. It could be a receptionist. You don't look down on people, right? Those guys are gatekeepers and they have the power sometimes to open certain doors or to close the door. Second to the last is partnerships, collaborations, and alliances. Sometimes you cannot do it alone. If there are people you need to reach out to, to partner with, if there are people you need to speak to, to help you to speak with someone, you want to take note of that, but be willing to open up. I know you are shy. I know you don't know how to go partner with people who have been in this space before and you'll be able to get you know get into the door that you feel like are too big for you and then lastly always come prepared with your cv your portfolio or your pitch meaning always be ready be ready all the time anybody can ask you anything anytime i was in a i was in a meeting yesterday that i didn't know it was a Fox women council meeting i didn't know they were having a, uh, i didn't even know what it was about it was the first time i joined them and they were filled with white i was the only black women the only the youngest among them and then, you know, they just said, okay, so we're going to split you guys. We're doing speed networking. Speed networking is they're going to split you on Zoom. You know how they split people on Zoom into two, two sections, like two or three people in different sections. And we're going to show you guys randomly now, get to meet each other, this, 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 that. And then I'm like, what's going on here? I didn't come for networking corner. I thought it was, and before you know it, people are just talking about what they do. And I was the first person they wanted to go. It's not that I live ready. I wouldn't have anything to say, honestly, because I didn't know that it, that was what it was. So you want to know let's at least we call it elevator pitch that's the word i'm looking for we call it elevator you want to have an elevator pitch something about what you do ready that you can explain to anybody in 30 seconds within an elevator from up to down you can explain what you do it might not be that detailed but they understand what you do and have it with you all the time if a career blessing your cv should be on your phone be on a drive something you can upload something you can download and if it's a portfolio maybe as a business person have it handy and I know, so anytime opportunity come, you can share with people. So in summary, what we've said, if I can summarize it, summarize it in five C's, it would be capacity. Know what you can do. Build capacity, grow yourself. Confidence, unmute your mind. You also need confidence to be able to network. Compassion, don't look down on people. Uh, be willing to network across horizontal and vertical communities. Be part of, you know, where it is working, associations, partnerships, collaborations, and communication, which is also you, you know, sharing what you can do with people, bringing value to the table. And I think that's why I'm going to use my mic today. And I really just want to say thank you guys for listening.
to all of my speeches. I appreciate your. So if there's any question, we will take it, but I'll just hand over to the host for now and then we'll take it off from there. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Forbes coach, uh, global talent consultant, mm -hmm. a Rotarian, and I forgot the name of that, the second to the last that we Up had on Upwork. Expert vetted. So, expert vetted. Yeah, expert That's top vetted. Top one percent. Yeah, top one percent exactly. So <laughs> she's a top one percent freelancer on Upwork, which if I'm not if i'm right i think she should be probably the one percent of the one percent in africa uh yes. well africa has always been um i wouldn't say the backward in almost everything you heard what she said about forbes council so yeah she's in forbes council which is about one percent of the one percent africans there and uh, she's also up work well, what top one percent in Upwork, and uh, she is the CEO of at Novately Africa. And uh, so, uh, within two minutes, can you tell us about at Novately Africa? Um, the oh, community? Okay. okay, thank you, thank you so much. So, at Novately Africa is an organization, um, we, we do two things majorly. First, we were bridging the gap between African talent and global brands, and so what that means is we're connecting, you know. African talent, people with skills, tech and non-tech um, capacities with organizations and global brands who need that skill. And so that's like recruitment, right? And that is one on the side. Then the second thing we do in Abnovately Africa is capacity building. So we do, you know, trainings, we build communities. So we have a community called Borderless Professional, where career professionals and freelancers are a part of. That is an expression of Abnovately Africa. So talent are there professionals are there entrepreneurs are there so we're just really um sharing opportunities there so we have coaching consulting training and all of that going on there so that's what automatically africa is in one minute yeah um you might want to drop the sorry i couldn't find find the link the link to the google form so should okay. people want to join the website um, the whatsapp group and oh. uh yeah legacy lab is fortunate to have collaborated with Abnovately on that if before she became the top one percent <laughs> at the Forbes code so for legacy lab you know we are not just following you now that you are now to be the top exactly we, we started uh, together well we start we were we were with you in, the, in those days in so, the <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we are still in the trenches, though. Probably one day we'll become the top one percent. So. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, to the top one. Does anybody have any question? Um, during while waiting for, I believe we just wait one minute. Or, okay, yeah, you've dropped the link. So just a minute for questions. Do we have questions? uh well uh, actually whenever she explains things they are very very straightforward but we might want to have one or two questions about um networking how to apply it in our daily lives or probably by the time we join the group we will be able to um do that okay so um thank you very much to everybody who joined today um this is the um, digital edge series um a monthly webinar courtesy of legacy lab and the legacy lab is a social impact um digital innovation lab we try we try our best in training equipping and supporting technology and innovative youths to thrive in the global economy and um this event this series is we have partners of course we have Novately africa and um also supporting this series is the google developer students club the like, state university chapter and um yeah so it's holds every last thursday of the month that means the next one is coming in last thursday in may and uh, please we dropped a link for feedback the feedback um she 
Tim Tokolokunle prepared a slide, and um, in the next of this webinar will be ready. So for anybody who wants to listen again, so we would like to have your contacts and we would like to have it through the feedback form so that we will be able to, you know, share the link to you to watch the um use the feedback form um let me see if i can quickly post it again so that we could use that and um okay so that's the feedback form there and um thank you very much thanks so much everybody for joining us this will be the end of the call uh, we see you on the next one. Thank you very much, um, Rotarian Tim Tokbe Lukunle. Um, we call out back then, and uh, thank you to our Rotarians, our friends, and everyone who have joined. And for those that are just joining, <laughs> thank you for just joining. Uh, I think Sarah was this raising is the her hand. Of... Sorry. Sorry. I saw someone raising her hand, Sarah. I don't know if she had dropped the hand now. Oh, okay. She, maybe oh, okay, she had okay. a question. Good evening, everyone. I don't know if yeah, she's still Sarah, do you have something? Hello, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. What I had is not a question per se, it's just, um, let's say, a contribution. So, you know, just to retreat what Coach has said. And yes, I'm following from Borderless Professionals also. Nice to have you here, man. Oh, oh nice. Yes. Thank you for joining us. You, <laughs> it was a wonderful session, I must say. And, you know, just to retreat the um, need for networking and all. I remember um, earlier this year, I was, because I switched careers to HR and, you know, I was looking for hit, um, entry roles and all, and it was, you know how it can be in Nigeria, it's, it was difficult, I must say. But then I remember that, okay, this friend of mine that, you know, referred me to this, my current role, we've been friends in school and, you know, we just talk once in a while and everything. And there's this other friend of ours too that, you know, she tells me that ah, they've not been in touch since we left school and all. But because, you know, I've been able to, you know, talk with her, even if it's not as frequent as we used to while we were in school, but because you know, we talk and also she was able to refer me to this. I just spoke to her one day that uh, I'm actually sp um, switching careers from education and I want to go into HR. And she told me uh, they had an, uh, an opening in their office and, you know, that's how I got the job and I'm doing that now. So just to retreat that and I must say networking is really good. Yeah, congrats to you. That's powerful. Mm. Thank you for sharing that with us. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. All right. Over to you, boss. <laughs> Yeah, that was great. Um, hopefully, one day to let me talk about, please remember to connect. <laughs> to connect yes, us sir. to the top 1%. Yeah, yes, thank sir. you very much. Uh, to those that just joined us, uh, unfortunately, we're just we're wrapping up. But um, if you could um, fill up the form, you know, we would send you a copy of the go of the link um we send you a copy of the presentation as well as the link to the call that you just um, missed so thank you everyone and we'll see you on the next one bye thank you bye